Before discussing the notion of an effective rate, let's do a little review of the ideas of simple interest and compound interest. So if we take T dollars and we put it into an account, say for T years here, and we would want to look at uh, how much we're going to accumulate and get out of this account after that time. Now, we've seen two models, mainly the simple interest model, which gave us our original amount back, plus a certain amount that was going to be proportional to the amount we deposited, and what the rate was, and how long we left it in it. Now, uh, the compound model was a slightly more complicated. What it did was is that after each compounding period, we would be getting interest not only on the amount that we, our original principal, but also the amount of interest that was then deposited at each period along the way. Now the in here is the total number of periods. And the I here is going to be the rate per period, the, com the com rate per compounding period. Now, this should be distinguished from uh, the uh, annual rate, for example. The annual rate is the rate that occurs up here in this formula. So, for example, if we have an annual rate of 12% uh, and we're going to compound something monthly, then uh, the annual, the monthly rate here, which would be the rate per compounding period, would have to be the 12% divided by 12 or just 1% per month. Okay, maybe we should work out uh, an example just to clarify these things. So let's take the situation where we put $1,000 in, and we just want to leave it in for, say, just one year because uh, I want to see what how to compare the two different models here. So the simple model, how much does it give us out? Well, we're going to get our $1,000 back plus the, oh, let's see, I need a rate here. So let's just pick up something simple like 5%. It's 5%. Uh, so at... Uh, at one year, uh, fi at 5%, the interest will be 0 0.05 times 1,000. Since we're just doing it for one year, we get uh, one here. So what does this part become? Well, this is just going to be 5% of 1,000. That's going to be $50. Okay, so together we're going to get uh, $1,050 is how much that account is going to have in it. Okay, so now let's go back and look at the compound interest count. All right, so what are we going to get? We put our $1,000 in. So I'm looking at this formula right here. Uh, we're going to do, well, how often are we going to compound it? Let's compound this, say, daily. Because that's a typical period to compound. Uh, so what does this expression become here? Well, it's going to be 1 plus. Now, if we're doing it 5% compounded daily, I have to figure out the daily rate. So at least I'll be able to write it down, even though I don't want to write down all that such a small number. So I have to look at 0 0.05 divided by 365. And now if we're doing this for one year, the total number of periods would be the total number of days in a year, so that would be 365. Okay, so that would be the expression. Well, that's a pretty complicated looking expression. I think I'll have to uh, try to get a calculator to calculate that out. So let's pull in a calculator here. Okay, so now let me see if I want to calculate this. Uh, I can take a thousand times. I better put in all the parentheses. One plus point oh five divided by 365, close parentheses, and I want to raise this to the 365th power and see what we get. Well, okay, we see we get a little more than uh, $1,050. We're going to get about $1.27 more. Okay, so uh, let's see what we get here. So this is going to be what I say, 1000 1000 
that thousand. Fifty one. And uh, my five are going to come out. Fifty one dollars. Uh, maybe I get a better color or something. And it's what it was at 27 cents. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of hard to read. Uh, $1,051.27. All right. Okay, so you see we got a, a little bit more. Now, uh, and that leads to the uh, subject of our uh, talk here. Uh, what I want to know is uh, what simple interest rate is going to give me the same amount of money? Because you go in and you'll find people are giving you offering accounts at different compounding periods, and you have to be able to compare them. So you want to compare apples and apples. And so we want to figure out what the annual interest rate is, the simple rate that's going to give us the same thing. So what we'd like to know is what simple uh, rate uh, gives the same result as the compound rate. Okay, so uh, actually this does not depend on the initial amount that, that you take here whether it be a thousand dollars or uh, whatever it's going to be um, so we can start out with say uh, p dollars instead of a thousand and let's take a look at how we uh, calculated these things so if i put p dollars in here what was this expression then going to be well that would be times one plus 0.05 over 365 but we just using the same example again of five percent compounded daily and we raise that to the 365th power okay now so what if i want to figure out the simple rate that's going to contribute to exactly the same thing okay well that's going to be what well that's going to be the p dollars because that's what we uh, put in and then we wanted to add to it uh, the interest which was going to be p dollars times that annual rate which we're looking for now times the time well the time is just one year so i can put a one in there so it, take a look at what we've got going on here p's at the different spots cancel this p and this p and this p is going to cancel and so what we're actually uh, left with is uh, this expression over here which actually we calculated it out before uh, remember when i used the calculator uh, what was it? It was going to be a more complicated kind of thing here. Uh, for getting the dividing by the thousand, it would be uh, 0.05 uh, and so forth. Um, 1.05 was 127. Actually, it was a little smaller than that, wasn't it? it was 126 something really like. Uh, six seven all right so that's what this left hand side becomes over here and that would be equal to one plus basically r r times one the p's got canceled so how do we solve this for the uh, r well i can just subtract one from both sides and what am i left with i'm left with my r is equal to uh, 0 0.05126767, oh, I guess. So, or what are we saying? It's saying 5 point, basically 1.3%. So what we're saying is, is that 5.13% is the simple interest, which is equivalent to 5% compounded daily okay so what we've found is for this one particular case here we found the uh, simple rate here 
that corresponds to the uh, compounded daily. Now, uh, you can use the same, well, we should see what was the overall strategy we used here. Uh, how do we put everything together? Well, look at this part right here. Basically, we had 1 plus r on the right-hand side, and that was going to be equal to what? This. Well, how did we get that? Well, what we did is we took 1 plus, and then we used the, in this case, it was a daily rate. It would be whatever the period uh, rate is here, and we raised it to the number of periods in the year. So uh, this was going to be uh, the period rate. And this was the number of periods in a year. And then what we did is we subtracted one from both sides. Subtract here, subtract the one over there. And so what do we come out with? And the formula that we usually find in textbooks and things says the rate effective, the so-called effective rate, is going to be 1 plus the compounded rate to the number of compounded periods minus 1. Now, uh, sometimes people use other language to describe this. So, for example, uh, instead of calling this the effective rate, some people will actually just call this the yield, the annual yield. The yield is sort of uh, easier to write than effective rate or something like that. Uh, now, uh, one more kind of comment here. Uh, we noticed that there was not a whole lot of difference between for a thousand dollars for one year between a simple rate and a compounding rate and so sometimes you don't want to get uh, uh, all worked up over a, a slight difference in, in rate between uh, 1.13 and uh, 5.13 uh, 5 and 5%. Five now, of course, it would make a lot of difference if instead of $1,000, we were talking about a $1 million. Uh, and if we were using for a longer period of time to look at it, then the compounding effect is going to have a significant uh, impact. But if you're looking at a short period of time and a small amount of money, then maybe you would want to look at other considerations as well, such as which of these investments would be uh, the most risky, for example. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for uh, viewing the video.